Okay, our next speaker uh, is uh, a very smart guy also. Greg Sowers is an inventor, an entrepreneur, and a businessman. He holds five U.S. patents. Uh, he hails from Las Cruces, New Mexico, where he, has wife, he and his wife employ more than 70 people. So he knows something about you know, free enterprise. Uh, he has a bachelor's degree in engineering from Brigham Young, and he served in the Army for two years in Korea. Uh, the conservative, Greg Sowers, is seeking the nomination for the U.S. Senate on the Republican ticket, and he'll speak on restoring promise, the promise of prosperity in New Mexico. Greg Sowers. He's trying to find his speech. <laughs> no. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Here we go. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay, I need to speak right into the microphone. Well, here we are. Okay, 40 years ago, I was discharged from the military. As uh, Frank mentioned, I'd served in the military. Uh, he did get something wrong at, at okay, at the, uh, I, I had a teaching degree, not an engineering degree. So uh, I was a school teacher for four years. But when I was discharged from the military, I came back to New Mexico here at the university enrolled and there I did the greatest each achievement in my life. I met and married my wife Karen. She has borne me <laughs> she has borne me six children and we now have 18 grandchildren and are expecting two more in 2012. Uh, our first son was born right over here at the Presbyterian Hospital. So that was an exciting time in our life. So I'm glad to be back on campus to speak with you today. You know, many things have changed since the 70s, but I find that human nature is always consistent. And it's been consistent throughout the ages, and it isn't going to change by some smoke and mirror politician. When my classmates and I graduated, we felt that we would be able to get a job with a stable company and work for the rest of our life, our productive years. That wasn't the case with then, and it's not the case now. The job market has changed, the mindset of businesses has changed, and the world has shrunk. Today, the average college student will skip from job to job and company to company multiple times during their career. And finding their niche during, at, in this climate will be very difficult, but there is a way forward, and we know that that way forward is not hope and change. What, Ameri <laughs> what America needs is the promise of prosper prosperity. prosperity. Re restoring the promise of prosperity is what I've come to talk about with you today. As a young man, I'm a lot like the young men and women today. I started my career as a teacher, as mentioned, and after a few years, I started my own manufacturing business. I just wanted to see what it was like to, to be an entrepreneur and step out and do things. And so, and over the next several years, I received my five patents, and one of those was for the Quick Kick Speedball, which is a soccer training device, and uh, we still sell those on Amazon.com. So if you're looking for a Christmas present for your children, grandchildren, hey, look it up. QuickKick.com, it's on Amazon. Okay, uh, I also worked in a number of trades, uh, contracting, a contractor, I've driven a batch truck on a highway crew. There's just a number of things that I've had to do to make, uh, make a living and, and provide for my family. And you know, meeting these, these young entrepreneurs and young people here today, I can see that the spirit of entrepreneurship is alive and well here at the University of New Mexico. Uh, starting a business is the most powerful and fulfilling thing that you can do. And you know what? It's the ultimate answer for unemployment, for yourself and for others. The framers of the Constitution never intended for the federal government to be the prime source of job creation. Just 
career politicians believe that the Constitution can be changed on a whim. We know that it's an inspired document aimed at limiting government. The power to tax and spend should not be the primary source of job creation in our country. Small businesses will be and always have been the backbone of job creation in America. And at some point, you should consider starting one. Young or old. Uh, what was this uh, Colonel Sanders guy that was, you know, 70 some years old, I think, when he got started? Self determination and personal responsibility are the keys to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And like the American dream, prosperity begins with individual liberty. And only in America can you, as an individual with a good idea, pull yourself up by your bootstraps and with hard work become successful and, and able to provide for yourself, your family, and those around you. So you've got to be able to grab onto that dream and hold on. America is the best place in the world to run a business and earn wealth because property rights as envisioned by the Founding Fathers are a key principle in our, in our Constitution and is protected by that. It's an essential part of our individual liberty. Now, for those of you who, who may not know who I am, my name is Greg Sowards and I'm the only conservative Republican running for the U.S. Senate. And, and this is perhaps the most crucial election that we'll have in our lifetime. Senator Jim DeMint, who is the uh, leader of the Tea Party Caucus in the Senate, made the statement on Fox News a few days ago, a few weeks ago, that he felt that this was perhaps the last election that we have to actually affect the direction of our country. So we cannot take a chance with sending people back to Washington or people to Washington that that are not like us. We've got to send someone who, who wants to be us, but just unfortunately is in a situation that they can go to Washington. And I guess that's how I see myself. There's other things I would rather be doing, believe me. In 2010, to our delight, and riding in the, on the grassroots Tea Party wave, we fired Nancy Pelosi from the House Speaker position. Yeah. <laughs> And in 2012, with your help, we'll once again unite together and we'll fire Harry Reid from his leadership position. We can do that. But here in New Mexico, we have a very serious hurdle to overcome, and that's in the very liberal Martin Heimrich. Heimrich's voting record matches the Obama agenda T for T. And it's, it's just a madness is sweeping our country. And I'm the, I'm the only Senate candidate who can beat Martin Heimrich. And the reason I can is because I will unite the conservatives, the young Republicans, and I'm looking to unite the independents and the conservative Democrats alike. Uh, we have very many things that we share in common, and those things are not Martin Heimrich. They just need to find out and know that that is the situation. And with your vote coming in November, we'll send Martin Heimrich and Harry Reid packing in Washington. So the choice is, is very simple. It, either we're going to vote for limited government or limited freedom. And in my book, it's not a choice. And that's why I'm here today. I'm here today to rally the young conservatives for the restoring the promise of prosperity for New Mexico to this region and for America. It's the only way forward. And I was excited to find the message of the Sowards for Senate campaign that has achieved a national awakening. Last week we traveled to Washington DC for the Defending the America Dream conference sponsored by Americans for Prosperity and joined over 2,000 like-minded people. We were able to hear and listen to uh, the two top runners for president and other conservative leaders in the nation. 
and I had an opportunity to meet with many Americans from all walks of life, and one thing became clear to me, and that is, is that there's more of us than there are of them. You know, just because this room is in fact doesn't mean that there's not a great deal of people who share our, our passion and our desires for America. There are more conservatives, more capitalists, more men and women calling for prosperity than union sympathizers, liberals, progressive, or occupiers of Wall Street. And their singular aim is to punish job creators and penalize hardworking Americans while demanding the confiscation of the fruits of their labors at the same time. It, it makes reason stare, doesn't it? Well, we have the momentum and we have the right message. We are winning. And regardless of what the liberal media says and tries to force on you, you can be confident that if you are seeking to restore the promise of the American dream, if you seek the blessings of prosperity, if you yearn for liberty, you are not alone. There are more of us than them, and we are winning and will win in 2012. Right now in New Mexico, there's 61,000 unemployed. And there's tens of thousands of people who are underemployed. And what we need to do is we need to, and they're looking for careers that fit their personalities. They take classes. They'll do whatever is necessary to provide for their family. And we need to tap into that potential. So it's time to slash unemployment, and it's time to deliver the promise of prosperity to those who have currently given up and feel that everything is just doom and gloom. Democrats believe the solution is to increase government jobs, to increase the size and scope of government, but we all know that increasing the size of government only leads to higher taxes, less freedom, and more regulations that kill businesses that create jobs. It's time we take a stand against the over 80,000 pages of bureaucratic rules and regulations that are forcing our businesses to seek business elsewhere and take their jobs and their money overseas. It's time to unleash the potential of the American people. The free market is the only way. Anything less destroys the American dream and turns our world into a bureaucratic nightmare. One area in the free market that is under attack in New to New Mexico citizens is the energy industry. Every well-read American knows that America should be independent of any other any other source, and that isn't a pipe dream. We know that America has more reserves, particularly coal and natural gas, than any other nation in the world. The oil and ga gas industry in the American continent should have no rival. Yet the Obama administration cap and trade, green energy movement, EPA standards, and multiple federal state agencies have placed the energy companies of the United States on the endangered species list. Thousands of jobs have been lost in the process. In the next four years, 10% of the electrical energy generation ability in America is going to be cut. And that's going to lead to higher electrical prices, which is going to mean higher production costs, higher prices in the store, and et cetera. And it's because people like Martin Heimrich have empowered unaccountable bureaucrats in the EPA to trump and tax the American people indirectly. And whenever President Obama said that it was, that it would be that electrical rates would necessarily skyrocket, he wasn't kidding. He was serious. And the people and businesses of New Mexico will be the ones that will face the brunt of that in the coming years. And that's no joke either. One of the more interesting meetings we had in Washington, D.C. was with Tom Pyle and Dennis Simmons at the Institute of Energy Research. And they brought to our attention the fact that in, in uh, North Dakota, that they were, because of the technology increasing, they were able to extract from the mines 250% greater production on private land, while the production on federal land hasn't gone up one iota in a decade. And the numbers don't lie. 
The United States has within its power the ability to become energy independent, and the people of New Mexico should look to North Dakota as an example of what is possible in terms of solid job creation when capitalism is unleashed. The proven reserves and resources of New Mexico are vast. We have the technology to responsibly fuel American businesses and families way into the future. And so prosperity is within reach. And when I am your senator on the Hill, I will do everything within my power to restore the mining and drilling sectors of our economy to the bedrock of America's energy production. And that will also help with the with the financial stability of New Mexico. Another area where New Mexico could rise as a leader is in the business of private health care. New Mexico could easily follow Florida and Arizona with, with baby boomers now retiring all over the country. The prospects for developing retirement villages and communities for assisted living are immense. But unfortunately, the climate in Washington and in the court system of New Mexico has placed targets on the fronts and backs of our health care providers. The policies pushed by the Obama administration and Democrats on the Hill have removed the incentive to become a doctor. Right here at the University of New Mexico, I'm sure there's some doctors that are just finishing up that if they would have known what they know today, perhaps would have chosen a different field. And so we would be left with less qualified students to fill those slots for medical school, and that would in turn give us, uh, I guess, less proficient doctors. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I didn't realize that. Okay, I'm about out of time here. So what I would like to say is I would like to thank Don Gluck and the, the uh, conservative Republicans here in, at the university for inviting me to speak. And I would like to say thanks for showing up. And for those of you who are ready to lead and, and help me in this cause, my website is gregsowards.com or senate2012.com. Feel free to, to join up and sign up and, and let me know you're out there. All right, thank you. Uh, the question was, is, isn't it re irresponsible to burn more coal and accept, et cetera? You know, I believe that the free market will eventually develop alternative sources of energy that will be adequate and less expensive than coal. And when that happens, I'm going to be the first one to sign up for it. But I can promise you, we were in, we were in Washington, or excuse me, we were in China 18 months ago, and we were taking a train across the country. And it was amazing how many coal-fired plants we saw in construction phase one right after another, after another, after another. So when New Mexico says we're not going to burn coal, but the rest of the United States is going to, and, and we as America aren't going to burn coal, but the, the rest of the world is, I think we're fooling ourselves. We need to extract the coal. We have low, we have low uh, uh, sulfur coal in Utah, in northern New Mexico, and we need to use that. We have a coal-fired uh, electrical plant up here in San Juan. We employ 900 people are employed in that. And we, we produce a, a great deal of energy there. Uh, 300 of, of them are from the Navajo Nation. And so there's a reason we do that. I will always put people first when it comes to production of energy and et cetera. But we're, we can be responsible. I, we're, gonna, we're the most responsible people in the world when it comes to our environment. And I don't believe anyone can argue with that. Thank you very much. Thank you.